Hello everyone, welcome back to Grant Paints, and this week we're going to be continuing our series on kit bashing and painting Space Wolves for Warhammer 40,000. I have this guy here which we kit, bash, kit bashed up last week, and he's got some really awesome details, and I can't wait to show you how to paint him. Alrighty, for starters, we're going to start by painting all of his armor, and we're going to paint it with Russ Gray. This is the primary color of the Space Wolves. It's this awesome blue-gray, and we're gonna go ahead and coat all of the armor pieces here, on his legs, on his chest, and his arms, um, and his power pack as well, and with his helmet. I'm gonna try and scoop out a little bit of paint. Be wary with these uh, paint pots. They're a little, little finicky. Um, I'm gonna just kinda get a glob here on my paint palette. Just kind of pull my brush back and twist it at the same time to kind of get an even coating of paint on the brush but at the same time not overloading the brush with too much paint because we don't want to have giant globs on this guy um, we're going to start here and show you just kind of some nice easy strokes doing our best to get a nice thin coat here um, you can definitely like over here, I've got my water. Just dip your paintbrush in there. Get a little water on there just to thin the paint out a little bit. That way it's gonna flow a lot better onto the model. And you can see, it'll get a nice even coating. The goal here is we're gonna do two thinned out but even coats of this rust gray color. Next, we're gonna get a nice um, covering all over the model with a shade paint called Drakenoff Nightshade. Now what shade paints are is they're super thinned down paints that really like to seep into the recesses and make all the little details like these little lines all over his armor really pop and stand out. You could do this with any number of colors whether it be black, brown, or blue shades just kind of depending on the tone of armor that you want. This is gonna add a much bluer, um, cooler tone to the armor, which I prefer for my space wolves, because this is the blue shade. Now it's important to remember, we're not gonna wanna put the shade directly onto him because it's gonna pool and get all over the place. So I'm just gonna get a little on my brush and put some in the palette over here. I got one like this. That way I have a little more control of the amount of shade paint that is on my brush at any given time. I'm just gonna do the same thing I did with that rust gray and kinda pull a little bit of that paint out. And with shade paints, you like to go from the top to the bottom. That way I can pull anything that kinda pools down to more of the lower parts here. I'm just gonna get a nice healthy coating on there. Um, try and not let it get too dark in any given spot. Because we want to keep that lighter gray color to it rather than just a straight blue color. Okay, you can see now how much that has darkened that armor down. But it's got that nice blue detail in all those little recesses. Really making those details pop like on his leg and on the power pack. And you're going to appreciate that here in this next step. Where we're going to take this rust gray again. And we're going to go back over a lot of the armor panels just to get that color to be that blue gray that we like so much. But we're gonna do it carefully as to avoid all the little details and try and keep that nice detail, dark blue in those recesses. All right, with all the blue armor done, we're gonna attack these shoulder pads here. Um, this one over here, we're gonna do in a red color. And this one over here where it's not covered by the wolf pelt, another details we're gonna do in a bright yellow. For this step, I'm going to be using Mephiston Red for the right shoulder pad. This one should have good coverage. Over a gray primer, you should have no problem getting it to a nice red color. Yellow, on the other hand, and I'm using Uriel Yellow here, will take quite a few coats to get it to go on smoothly. Yellow is one of those colors that's kind of a pain in the butt to paint, but a way we can help with that is by using Ulthwen Gray, which is this almost off-white gray color. And if you lightly put it in the areas where you're gonna want some yellow, it'll 
make coverage so much easier. Alrighty, we're just going to apply it just like we did with the rust gray. Bend it down just a little bit, and we're just going to apply it to the spots where we want it. Make sure you're getting it into those cracks there too, um, that he has on the shoulder pad. Just making sure it's covering every inch that we want yellow. And if you get a little bit on like fur and some other stuff, this is an easy color to cover up without any issue. And we're just gonna take this yellow and get it in where we painted that gray color. Making sure we try and stay off as much stuff as we can. Next up, we're gonna be attacking that right shoulder pad with some bright fist and red. This is a great color that provides just another extra pop of color to these guys. It really gives them that unique characteristics that they're known for. Okay, now that we've finished up this red and the yellow, we're gonna move on to hitting a bunch of the brown areas like his pelt here, and he's got some other little leather bits like his belt, this pouch here, um, another little pouch, and this holster, as well as the grip on his ax and his sword. We're just gonna base coat all of that with brown, that way we're able to highlight from there. Now that we've coated all the areas that we want brown um, with that brown paint, we're just gonna bring out some more of those details on there with a technique called dry brushing. So I've got this tan here, and I put a little bit on my paintbrush, and when I grab this paper towel, I'm just gonna rub the paint as deep into the bristles as I can, and then try and remove as much of the paint off of the brush as I can. That way, I can just kinda hit those raised areas with my brush, and it'll really Pick out all the details that I want and you can see that it makes the parts of the little fur pelt here really pop out and stand out amongst the rest of the details and leading leaving like the darker brown in the shadows there next we're gonna take the same tan paint a little on our brush just like we've been doing and I'm gonna hit some areas because he's got some teeth here that are kind of wrapped up on his shoulder pad. And I'm also gonna hit this little leather pouch just to give it a slightly different color than the rest of the brown that's already on him. And give it just a little bit of detail just to make it stand out. As well, if you're feeling fancy, you can do a little edge highlight on some of your brown. Taking the side of your brush just to kinda hit the edge of some of these brown parts, make them stand out a little more. Now we're gonna quickly finish off that little pouch on his shoulder pad with a reddish brown shade here. Get a little on our brush. Pull it out like we did earlier. And just get it onto that shoulder. Next we're gonna be hitting a lot of the black details on him, like the armor joints down in there and behind his knee and a little bit on his torso and some areas kind of like on the bolter where it's gonna be a little more black. And I'm using Black Templar contrast paint to do this. What a contrast paint does is it's somewhere in between a regular paint and one of those shade paints we've been using. So it's going to seep a little bit into those recesses, but not, not cover the rest of the model. So it'll give us a nice even coating and it makes detailed areas like these armor joints really stand out. For this next step, now that we've finished coating some of those black areas, we're gonna take a more silver metallic color. We're gonna base all of the metallics that we want to be silver. Kind of like his ax blade here, some details on his gun, like the barrel. As well, we wanna hit some areas like the teeth on this uh, chainsaw sword and the under part of this little pistol holster. Now that we've got all the nice silver pieces done, we're gonna hit another couple areas with the gold paint that I've got here, kind of like this um, chest piece that he's got, the wolf on his ax. We wanna hit this back token where it's got the cool wolf heads. Some details here on the gun that can stand out. It's kind of got some cool filigree. 
as well as the housing of the little wolf tail here, which I need to go over and paint kind of like that pelt because I totally forgot about it. Alrighty. We're just gonna finish off some areas with some little details. Um, he's got a little gem here that I'm gonna paint red. He's gonna have some red lenses to his eyes. Then he's got a little rune on his helmet that I might paint with his light blue so that it stands out and looks like it's glowing. But we're getting close to the final stages of this model. Alrighty, and with those last little details like the eyes and runes done on this guy, we're gonna finish him off with two more steps. I want to give him some details to this gene sword so it's not just gray. And I want to give him some pack markings or squad markings on his right shoulder pad. To start, I want to make that chain sword a bright yellow, kind of like we did earlier. It's going to take a couple of coats, just be diligent, and try and keep it as smooth as possible. Okay, now that we've got the yellow coating on the chain sword. I'm gonna make some nice triangular shapes with some red, just to give it a bit more of that space will feel because they're known to do this to their chain swords. Nice lines. And then just fill in those triangles. I'm just putting like three on each side, just to kind of give it a bit more of a unique design. to help it kind of tie in with the rest of the model. Alrighty, and with those chain sword triangles done, we're gonna do something kind of similar on this ch uh, shoulder pad here. Space Wolves are known to make some triangular shapes on their right shoulder pauldron to kind of denote the squad that they're in. I'm going to kind of just start in making a triangular like shape like this. And with that, correcting just a couple of those lines, our Space Wolf is ready for battle. He is painted to what I would consider tabletop standard, ready to be used in the game and just look awesome as you're doing so. I hope you this helps and that you will be out there painting your own Space Wolves and that you can add your own spins and twists like I did. Alrighty, see you next time.